smile, you on camera. <laughs> I got the print though. <laughs> you see the number, it's all they need. Did you have it laminated yourself? Oh, the ball of these. Okay, that's it though. We're in it now. All of these fours. <laughs> 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 yeah, really. Uh, 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 yeah, really. I'll pull the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms, people. Don't let the UN and Barack Obama try to take our guns away. Let's support liberty, not tyranny. Protect the Second Amendment. Amendment. You have a right to protect yourself. I'll the Constitution. People are forgetting the point. Guns in the hands of American citizens are not for shooting home burglars, oh. not for hunting, and not for target practice. They are to serve as a psychological deterrent to our own govern government to not engage in sweeping cultural changes that are against the will of the people. Right on. Yay. That's right, you got it right. The, this right should not be infringed and is necessary to the security of a free state. The Founding Fathers knew, they knew that the history was enough to put in place the Second Amendment. They knew the history. They put it in place to protect the future generations of Americans from the same threat, tyrannical, and oppressive government that they had faced. Our Founding Fathers, our country was founded on guns, right? That's how we won. That's how we fought the British. Um, our Constitution sets in place a government free of tyranny. I'm looking at the Constitution as a restraining order against tyranny. Yep. That's how I look at it. And in order to make it stay that way, people have the right to remain armed as a last check on government gone That's awry. It, yeah. As soon as we are told that we should give up the right to keep and bear arms, we should become extremely awake, extremely alert, and ready to defend our rights. Lock and Let's not make the same mistake twice. Yeah. And in the words of... General George Washington, firearms are only the Constitution, they're only second in importance to the Constitution. They are the people's liberty to you, and that's why we're here. We're standing up for our liberty and our rights. Thank you, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, first of all, let me thank you for coming out. Most of you I do not know, a few people I do. And I want to share with you a little story. When I was on Facebook, a little earlier this week, I saw a picture. I saw a picture of a man holding a gun in one hand and an upside down U.S. flag in the other. For those of you who don't know, the upside, the upside down flag is a symbol of distress. Yep. Generally, we see that when people are taking fire. And there were a lot of people who were offended by this. A lot of veterans who were offended by this. To those people, First, let me tell you something about myself. I'm a vet. And I looked at this particular flag, and I caught the meaning of it, and I realized that the United States really is in distress. <clears throat> Thomas Jefferson wrote a great many things in that small, short document, the Declaration of Independence. One of those things that he wrote and one of the most oftentimes quoted things that he wrote had to do with self-evident truths. Self-evident truth is something that everyone can look in and say, my God, that is right. It is this truth that is so completely obvious that no one can possibly ignore it. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men were created equal, that each were endowed by his creator with certain inalienable rights. Let's think about inalienable for a second. Inalienable. When we look at inalienable, that's something that cannot be taken away by an act of man. Am I wrong? Because it wasn't given by man. It's not given by man. It's there as you are born. If you believe in God, it's God given. If you don't believe in God, it is given to you because you are alive and because you are breathing. When the Constitution was written, it was written by James Madison over the course of a long time after a, a tremendous amount of research. There was a large number of people that went to Philadelphia to debate it. And there's a book about it called The Miracle of Philadelphia. And the yep. reason why it was a miracle was because so many people had so many differing opinions as to what should be in a constitution. And at the end of all this, at the end of all the debate, 
they still weren't happy. They needed something as a compromise so that all the states would get on board and all the states would ratify it. And that thing was the Bill of Rights. In the preamble to the Bill of Rights, most people don't know that there is a preamble to the Bill of Rights, the people found that it was necessary to revisit those words of Jefferson and say that all these truths are self-evident. There's the freedom of speech, the freedom to practice religion, and right next is the freedom and duty to bear arms in the preservation of a free state. Yay! We are in distress. We may not be taking fire as of yet, but our government, our government has been operating outside the law for a very, very long You're time. Here. Yeah! Yes! And to be perfectly honest with you, unless we stand up, that's not going to change. It's been practicing outside the law because our three branches of government, our system of checks and balances, has been so corrupted that the only thing left as a check and balance is that fourth branch of government, we the people. This is what we are. This is where we are. There's not a huge group here, but there is a group here. And my fellow Americans, we need to recognize that our country is in distress and we need to let our friends, our neighbors, understand what that means. We need to get them out here. We need to get them to defend their rights. Thank you for coming out and I appreciate being heard. You said it, brother. Um, I would like to invite Darren Walsh to give us a speech. He was just at our meeting and it was amazing. So if we could give Darren a look around, a uh, round of applause. Thank you, Darren. Um, you might, you might, uh, Listen up. Well, I'd like to thank you all for coming out today. Thank you. Especially in the middle of winter. And especially, I want to thank those of you who are helping keep us safer today by being armed. I started, right. I, I started That's an easy one. Right here. <laughs> but I have to ask you, what is wrong with you gun crazies? Nothing. <laughs> Don't you know that Martin Luther King's birthday was on Tuesday? Martin Luther King Day is coming up on Monday. He was killed with a gun. Yep. How dare you do this now? Sorry or about so that, Martin. the uh, gun haters would say. I, of course, don't really think that way. I, I just really wanted to a make crap. a point. <laughs> you know, when it comes to guns, there are so many lies and so many shameless omissions that are uh, committed by the gun haters. Well, it's time for a little truth. We can start with the fact that Martin Luther King had armed security. Yep. They don't like people to know that. It's, also, it's even true that he applied for a permit to carry a gun. He's turned down. Unfortunately for him, I guess, the uh, the state of uh, Alabama, I think it was, turned him down. Just goes to show how dangerous it is to let the government regulate who can and can't have guns. That would be the Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was also a group called the Deacons for Defense and Justice. Not particularly well known. It's another aspect of the civil rights movement that's often covered up. They actually carry guns in defense of people's rights. For example, four of them showed up with shotguns at the uh, Jones, Jonesboro High School in Louisiana. Louisiana. And that was when the police and the racists backed down and the school was integrated. Not a single shot was fired. It's amazing what a gun does. <laughs> See, that's the problem. The gun haters want to keep up this scary and negative image of guns in civilian hands. And that is something that we have to counter. We can't let them win this battle. And this is one way that we do it, is by putting out the information that allows people to know that guns are our friends. We need those guns. Because in that, for example, in the, in the example of the civil rights movement, guess what? It was the government, specifically the police, 
that were the problem. They weren't protecting anybody. It was the armed civilians that were. <clears throat> yep. Now this is why the founders didn't want us to have a standing army. They knew that such a force would be used to oppress. Now today, the standing wow. army <clears throat> that we have to worry about is the huge law enforcement establishment. I'm not talking only about state and local police. I'm talking about agencies like the Internal Revenue Service, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, ATF, the, the uh, yes, the ATF. Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, the Drug Enforcement Administration, and the goes on and on. Mm -hmm. You know, <clears throat> while these agencies exist, our liberties will remain in danger. Can you say right. TSA? Today. We live in a world of the progressive's creation. Mm. You know, yeah, boo, right. <laughs> Somewhere halfway between socialism and liberty. It's a world increasingly ruled by force. And that force is wielded by a powerfully armed government. So whether it is the force of taxation, or the force of regulation, the force of compulsory education, or the force of law enforcement, the effects are very plain for all who are willing to see. That is a society becoming sicker and more aggressive. We have sunk a long, long way since 1850 when a Frenchman by the name of Frederick Bastiat wrote in his book, The Law, is there any need to offer proof of this, that this odious perversion of the law is a perpetual source of hatred and discord? that it tends to destroy society itself. <coughs> if such proof is needed, look at the United States. There is no country in the world where the law is kept more within its proper domain, the protection of every person's liberty and property. As a consequence of this, there appears to be no country in the world where the social order rests on a firmer foundation. Well, they're sure not talking about us like that in France anymore. Nope. <laughs> Progressivism has failed to achieve its lofty ideal. Instead, it has created our present situation of crime and murder, war and empire. Political correctness. It is this failure that the advocates of gun control want to cover up. Instead of facing reality, they blame guns for the problems the implementation of their ideas has created. Now, before anyone gets too smug, I want to emphasize that both parties have adopted the progressive ideology. Today's so-called liberals and conservatives might advocate different degrees and different aspects of it, but advocate progressivism they do. The liberals may advocate gun control, but it is the conservatives who advocate the police state that can enforce it. A stop and frisk is a great example of this. Gun control is what drives it. So while the liberals object to stop and frisk, they advocate its driving force. The conservatives may advocate stop and frisk, but they oppose the gun control that drives it. So it's past time for both sides to realize that the only way the killing will end, the only way to heal society is by turning away from ruling it by force and towards voluntary interaction between its members. And this means change at the institutional level. Disarming the government and keeping the people not only armed, but organized to defend themselves. So let me close with one, one other quote. This time it's from Representative Elbridge Jerry of Massachusetts. Don't worry, this is back in 1789. During the floor <laughs> debate over the Second Amendment, he said this. What, sir, is the use of a militia? It is to prevent the establishment of a standing army, the bane of liberty. Whenever governments mean to invade the rights and liberties of the people, they always attempt to destroy the militia in order to raise an army upon their ruins. So, wishing you liberty, guns, and peace. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. But, uh, I just want to thank you all for coming out. This yeah. means a lot that you're 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 that, that, uh, you guys would uh, take your time to come out here with us. I want to read a quote. Um, Martin Luther King Day is Monday. That's the day. I, that's what I will be celebrating on that day, not any other event that may be going on. Um, it says, "Freedom is never 
voluntarily given by the oppressor. It must be de demanded by the oppressed. And that's what we are. It's not about Republicans. It's not about Democrats. It's about liberty or tyranny. And they're trying to give yep. away our yep. constitutional rights. It, it, it's up to us. I am a mother. I'm a teacher. I work in a school. When that tragedy happened, it, it hurt every bone in my body. I, I cried. I was so upset. But President Obama is not going to stop it. Yep. Cops can't even stop, keep us safe in the streets. You, you expect the federal Obama government to keep us safe? I would, I would count on me with the gun behind my door than waiting 15 minutes for a police any day. That's right, that's right. So I just really want to thank you, like I said. Keep, I want to keep it short, but thank you all. Thank you, Jack. Yeah. All right.